Despite its tranquil appearance, the golden savanna stretching hundreds of thousands of kilometers almost as far as the view of the indented cups of the Mount Kenya is now burning red hot. Recent and frequent confrontation between farmers and hundreds of armed herders matching down with large herds of cattle, goats and sheep have put these plains of sometimes savage beauty at the heart of an unpleasant history of violence. It's been many long dry months. The herders say they must find fresh pasture for their herds. The plentiful grazing and water on the private ranches and farms is hugely tempting. But while confrontation between farmers and herders during dry seasons is hardly anything new, this latest wave has some novel elements. It's taking quite a violent and destructive turn. Hapa tunatumia jungle laws. Kwa hivyo atutumii sheria ile tunajua. Sheria nafikiria ile wacho wanyahururu kuelekea pande hizi. Kama ni nyasi, hakuna haja kuja kufahamia shamba ya mtu unachoma lodge. Kama ni nyasi hizi ngombe ndio inakula nyasi ni mtu pana na ngombe aiharibu aiende kuchoma lodge, aiende kuua mtu. The morning of Sunday, the 31st of January, dawned grey for Anna Poise. The 44,000 Conservancy her family owns had been overrun by armed herders and a huge number of cattle. There was a clash between security men deployed to keep out the intruders. One of them was shot and killed. The herders, said to be about 150, set the tourist lodges she runs alight. Moving through the property, they stole what they could carry and vandalized what they couldn't. Anne was left to pick up the pieces of her life's work, set out on family land that they've owned for more than a hundred years. Welcome to my room. It was one of the major tourist destinations in the area, but for Anne and many other landowners and farmers across Laikipia, it's back to the drawing board. As the thousands of herders driving large herds into privately owned lands have left behind a trail of destruction in the county. Some of these conflicts is a result of misunderstanding between the management and the neighboring communities. This guy brought in uh, Samburus all the way from Marara at the expense of the neighboring immediate Maasai community. This is what created the problem. Then the Maasai they demand and saying, no, we are your immediate neighbor. You mean you cannot even give us a portion of, our, of your land to graze our animals? And for all these years we have coexisted peacefully. And after that there was a bit of some confrontation until an officer shot one of the, the, Moran, uh, the Morans at that farm. As we speak now, the owner has, has entered into some agreement with some of those uh, uh, pastoralists, the, the Samburus and the Ma community. He has given them a portion of the land. And he's, he's, he's appealing to me not to take the police to that farm. So I'm also torn between, do I take the police there? I'm, do I 
under the, that kind of arrangement. Farmers like Bensa and Kimani are constantly on the front line in this battle between them and the herders. His is a daily struggle to keep the intruders out. Many smallholder farmers near and around Rumuruti have had their crops destroyed. Kila mtu wako na shida. Wakulima tuko na shida. Wafugaji wako na shida. Lakini sasa wafugaji wamefika mahali sasa hata watai kujali mahali yako. Mtu tu analete mombe ama mbusi anakuja tu anaingiza. Hatai kujua wewe kesho utaenda wapi. Na hii ndiyo tekeme yetu. Vile hawa natekemea mbusi na ngombe. Na sisi hii ndiyo sasa ngombe yetu na hii ndiyo mbusi yetu. Nakuta tu mtu anaingiza na kusema shamba ni ya serikali. Lakini ile mahali hiku hapa si ya serikali ni yangu. Hata kama shamba inaweza kawa ya serikali. Kenya na lima hapa ni mahali yangu si ya serikali. Sasa nikimukose hiku ambao wanitasieka wapi. Senda sasa nipunguse. No jisi maigate inge shamba lako. Sawa. Sasa kiangazi kikuja oo tasongese shamba yako sawa kikuwa kiangazi. Sasa shida hata imetufawa sato kikuwa na mahali kula jasi. Hata uwezi juwa nani mwenye utaingisa tuwa kuja atuwa ili mbuda za kuja kutuwa. Kwa sababu mwila za shida ikikuwa kama hii. Auta ajielewa. Mungine juzi alikuwa mingisa kwa shamba mama mungine pale. Anaambiwa na mama na ni mama mze. Anamambia si ukijana utuwe ngombe. Anamambia sitoi. Pereka mi mali utapereka mi. Hata ukitaka kupigia uhuru pigia esi. Sasa mambo imekuwa na hile mtu anasema hivyo ni kijana mudoko sana. Mwaka hii mezidi saidi. Kwa sababu anapigana na askari. Life. Life ya wawakopi askari. Kama hapa kuna shamba hiko hapa ya kifuko fangu. Wanapigana mchana azarani. It's it's totally bizarre because you're trying to sort of think you're leading a normal day's life and then suddenly there's bang 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 and, and you're running for cover and lying down and stuff and then the police are running and then there's a confrontation. I think in the last 23 days we've had 21 days of attacks. We've got some really great support from our local police and they tried incredibly hard. But I must say there was there was a point where I thought we were going to be overrun. I mean, it was it was really really scary. There was there was bullets just flying everywhere. This this illegal grazing thing has been going on a while. Um, for us, it started in August. Since then, Maria has kept a diary of the almost daily attacks. In September, my brother had a plane crash. On the very day that we buried my brother here. We had stock theft. Tukasukia watu wawili na kuja wanafunga machuka. Nafunga machuka hapa na hako na matrosa kama isi yangu. Na hako na marungu kama isi yangu. Waka tuambia habari yeji msuri. Ati sisi tunatafuta mbusi. Kuna mbusi yetu meibio kondo. Gavi tatu. Na tumefuata nyae wa hiyo kondo imefika hapa. Sasa wanaenda mali kama pale. Wanaongea na simu. Anarudi tena na kuja na simama hapo. Wanaongea beke yao. Taka kidoa waka kuja. Kaina mali hiko ngombe. Sasa ngombe hiko tu kama hii. Kena mali kwa ngombe, sasa anasa kushabua ngombe. Tewa kidogo wangine wanakuja mpiu. Kumbi wako wako tu karibu na hiyo misitu wanakuja mpiu. Wanambia hii msuwe, simama. Wako na mabindugi, na mimi ingine na kujia mimi, na mbia mimi, simama. Sasa mimi sisi tu kusimama. Tukawana saa, sisi hakuna haja kusimama. Sabu tukusimama hapa, tutahuliwa, hapa zela tukimbie. Atugonge saa hili tunakimbie kama nikuwa tu uwe. Tukafanya juu shini, baka tulipita huku huku tu mali wanafuga. Tukafanya juu shini baka tukatokea, diyo tukaja. Kitu mwendo asa, kwa hivyo hakuna kitu tulikuwa tumetoa dani ya nyumba. Kufika kitu saa tiza, diyo nikasikia nyumba imuangua. Kwa hivyo hakuna kitu yangu ata mmoje. Nguwe ile nilikuwa nae kwa mwili, ni hiyo hiyo tundi ilipaki nae. They've beaten up our staff, they've completely looted and ransacked and broken and destroyed my brother's house. We had to have... Um, police to escort us there to see what was going on. We found his two dogs had been speared but were still alive three days later um, and we had to put them down. But um, you know the things that have been stolen from that house, beds, mattresses, fridges, you know if it's about drought and grass he wouldn't do that. This area has been a lot more violent. We've been shot at a lot. Our cars have been shot at. The police have been shot at in their vehicles. Two police officers working here have been shot and injured here. 
Laikipi West OCPD Moherai Merengo was the latest police officer to be shot in the chest Tuesday as he led officers to kick out illegal herders from Kifuku. As we were winding up our operation, winding, I think, to, for, uh, to debrief our men or not, to take stock of what we have taken, we have done the whole day, is now when this lone gun man had uh, positioned himself in a ticket, so he shot the OCPD inside this vehicle. I was ahead of the, of the troops on that particular day, so my vehicle was uh, like number two in the convoy, so the OCPD was the last vehicle. So he shot at the OCPD knowing that we have already passed. When somebody is armed with a firearm, he can do anything. You see, he can, his mind can tell him, uh, let us do this. You see, he wanted to, uh, to discredit the, the security personnel. More so shooting the senior, more senior police officers to, to, to create fear to the junior officers so that they feel like uh, they are not safe, they, they are threatened. Police wanafanya kazi ngumu sana. Sana, 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 hapa laikipi. Unakimbiliwa na mkuki, mara ni risasi. Sasa huu kipigia yu mtu na pressure inakuja. Kutoka juu, unakuta helikopter uh, zaidi ya uh, ina itashuka hapo kwa sababu ya mtu mwaja ya na polisi. There is a common view among victims that the attackers are incited by politicians to drive their animals forcefully into their lands. This is a bigger picture. This is a sustained planned, well-coordinated push. Um, or that's what it feels like. When you're going through it, um, 22 of the last 23 days we have been fired at while in this compound. On one day, a bullet came flying past us. Luckily, misses all of us, all of our staff, all of the police, and hits a young bull. And we had to put him down. There's a place that is a bit swampy, and uh, normally these fellows, they normally bring in the animal, animals to come and graze in the swampy area, and also uh, look for water from that uh, source. of uh, that source. So that's why there has been constant on and off. It is not something that is permanent. We remove the animals today, after two, three days they come back, when we are still handling another pa pa part of the, uh, another farm. Wameashio kutoka kule na kuna maji, kuna nini, wameshunga wamemaliza kule yote wamerudi mpaka hapa karibu na nyumba sasa kwa compound ya nyumba ya mtu ni nini iko pale ni maua tu ndio iko pale na bado wanakuja 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 haya nyasi na usika aje na lista ya maji na ndio hawa wanategemea kwa upande ile kunywa maji wakaenda wakaichoma wakamaliza solas hii ya fence hakuna kitu inasaidia wao wanaenda wanafunja kupiga marisasi kufunja kila kitu pale unakuta yani just to destroy sasa hapo kwa lodge venye walikuwa na wanagonga wenzangu hapo walifunja kila kitu ile iko pale si ati ni kitu wa kusaidia hao kile ilisaidia hao maybe ni mattress na sheets hizo vitu zingine meza vio unafunja chini na hakuna mtu anakuuliza nataka ieleweke wasi katika nchi yetu ya Kenya na katika inji zingine zote kwamba wafugaji wameingia mashamba ya wale wazungu kwa sababu ya shida na ile kitu ambayo imefanya loji shomeke wale askari walikuja wakapiga kijana risasi kwa hiyo ghadhabu watu wakaenda kuchoma loji kwa hivyo hii ndio kitu nasema kwamba hii watu wanakuwa provoked wa Masai wa Samburu wanaheshimu serikali wanaheshimu sheria so hiyo mama nimeambia yeye pole ni bahati mbaya ni kama sasa hiyo mama angeambia nini ile familia ambayo ilipoteza hiyo kijana nataka kuuliza hata yeye utamwambia nini hiyo familia ile ulipoteza kwa sababu ni, ni maisha lodge unaweza nunua mattress unaweza jenga nyumba ingine, lakini je utarudisha ile maisha hiyo kijana This herd of cattle peeking through the brown shrubs is being closely watched. They exude confidence and offer no regrets of the grazing patterns that have seen them drive their herds into private ranches. With the prevailing atmosphere of hostility, we could not manage to talk to the herders themselves. But in their Member of Parliament,
they find a vocal, candid, even uncompromising spokesman. Ivi juzi, wakati watu ambayo wameingia mashamba, ambayo imiatatisa wafugaji, waende wakati hiyo huwa, ama mara kuharibu vitu, ni kwa sababu hawa wenzetu, wakati tunaambia watusaidie, wanalete polisi, polisi wanatumia nguvu saidi. Wanainji sasa wamekasirika kwa sababu, si hati kwamba e, wanakuja kusudia, ni hile tabu, ni hile shida wakonae. Na maisha yao ni ngombe. Maisha yao ni mbuzi. Ni kama hii ngombe ikikufa, una maisha ya kuishi. There's thousands, perhaps tens, or even hundreds of thousands of goats, cattle and sheep in this county alone and they're grazing this past pasture into desert. This county is also home to one of the largest reserves of wildlife that is outside of protected national parks and these two have been affected by these invasions. This 49,000 acre Mugie Conservancy set up in the Laikipia Plateau is home to all of the big five. But the wildlife is all gone. Just thousands of cattle. This commune between these herds of elephants and cattle is the rarest of things in the wild. But heavily armed attackers broke down the boundary fences and drove in their vast herds of livestock. Now, this is the cold, hush reception into Muge. It has been conserved for over 20 years. So when you're working with conservation, it takes sometimes a long time to get your animal population back to a high number which is naturally found in that area. With this huge invasion of large numbers of cattle and livestock coming into the area, we find a lot of stress put on the land. The wildlife, you know, get badly stressed. We also see a lot of um, engagement between the livestock owners and the wildlife. And this is anything from shooting spears, bows and arrows. And this is what is human wildlife conflict. But on this sense, it is, it's gone beyond. It's gone, it's gone quite bad. It's rampant at the moment. So risasi alikuwa amepigwa karibu saidi ya nne hivi. Sababu ile risasi ilimweza ni hii alipigiwa hapa chini. Hapa hivi. So hiyo ni kama ilipigwa na ikaenda kwa roho kama angusha. Those still hapa hii bado ni risasi. Out of the eight we are talking about tulipata tu kama pembe end of mbili ndio imerecover. Poachers ambao tumekuwa tumewakasia kwa muda mrefu sana sababu security imekuwa tight and all that. Wamechukua hiyo advantage. So wakati hao washungaji wanaingia ndani pia wao wanachukua hiyo advantage tunabilemwe na So huyu ndio ana kama alikuwa anakunywa hapo akapigwa risasi. So alikuja kukutia hapa. Na alipigwa risasi kaa tatu nne hivi. Sababu bado kuna shimo dawa size hata tawaziona mzuri. Idadi ya nyati ni mingi sana. Ila sasa tumeanza ku retrieve kupata watu imeanza patrol yetu na kila kitu na nini ni nyati kati ya 18 mpaka 25. Wewe Twiga alipigwa risasi kaa nne hivi. Sabu kiangalia bleeding in risasi, risasi, hata kulikuwa na ingine hapa, alafu kuna ingine hapa chini ya nyasasa ilim, kama yu ndio ilimalese kabisa. Na huyo, baada kwa wakati walimchincha, huyo alikuwa na mtoto kwa tumbo. It was the, the Moran who had been shot, then from there, they revenged against the Atrukana, some of the employees who were employed on that farm. And uh, later on, we learned that the, there was a bit, uh, there were some, there were not many animals as being depicted because I, we sent our teams to the ground. And what we understand initially, the Pokos, they were killing, they had killed some two zebras. That is what we understand. So a conservancy which protects and brings the wildlife back, to just come in here and get rid of it and see it as 
you know, a problem, a drought, and just put it past, past us is, is cynical. The tens of thousands of cattle throughout the county have reduced the grass plains to little stumps of bush and soon into desert. 100% is not going to last. We know and we even speak to the, the owners at the moment and we have a lot of dialogue with them. I'm um, even speaking with them and getting their idea of when it's going to finish. You know, we're looking at two weeks to a month. You know, that's what they're saying. I agree on about three weeks. You know, it's, it's to the point where the grass is getting diminished. 50,000 head of cattle, it's unsustainable. It's going to finish and it will be turned into a dust bowl. Many of the farms and ranches had grazing arrangements with local communities. This involved allowing into the farms a number of animals for a modest fee. But these arrangements are now broken. We might start addressing a certain symptom. Kumbe there are other underlying issues that have led to that conflict. So once we go in is when we realize kumbe there are other underlying issues that have always been they, are, they have always been there and which have never been addressed. On the 13th of January 2016, the Lombara farm opposite Kifuku Ranch on the outskirts of Rumuruti was attacked. The owner, John Washiramwai, was shot on his way to Rumuruti from his farm. He has since been confined to a wheelchair and has been forced to abandon the farm. When, when George Moy was shot, we, had not been, uh, we were not in this county. Uh, we had not been posted to this county. All of us are new. We came in November. These are issues we inherited. But immediately after he was shot, we have really moved it to his farm and we have also removed quite a number of uh, illegal herders and aggressors on that farm. And even destroying some of those who had uh, also erected makeshift uh, structures on the farm. At the moment, as you go there, you will find that there is absolutely nothing. Since September, a number of farms have been invaded. Many believe that the tensions are due in part to the ethnic and geographic diversity of the area. These attacks are just the latest expression of long-standing tensions. You know what Kenyans are like? They'll do anything, anything for votes. Most of the votes are, are tribal. They, they vote along tribal lines. So if you're a Kikuyu, you're going to vote for Jubri. If you're a Turkana, probably Jubilee. If you're a Samburu, you're going to vote for Odium. That's what I mean. And so they're trying to, to clear out the tribes if they can. But the current dangerous situation is a potent mix of population growth, the increase in the number of livestock, overgrazing, guns, money and politics. <laughs> We know there are some aspirants who are aspiring to be MCS and to be members of parliament. They have been inciting their communities, telling them, let us invade these lands. It's like that, the, the leases have elapsed, they have expired. So that when they expire, you are found on that farm. People think it's easy and it's exotic and you live in a nice place. Yes, we live it, we have a beautiful view from our house, but the dam that's here is blood, sweat and tears, to put it there. That's what's improved this land. You don't just sit on the land and expect it to work for you. You have to work for it. I'm, I feel I'm part of this land. And yeah, it's hard when, when you're pushed. It's very hard. There is a process through which leases are either revoked or are renewed. We need to address ourselves specifically to these issues uh, without politicizing it, without letting politicians take advantage of the situation. 
a land use study done and published in January 2013 by a group of organizations and on behalf of the then Laikipia County Council, identified the idle and abandoned lands as a potential source of conflict marked in purple on this map. There are 10 subdivided ranches covering 239,000 acres with some 85,000 title holders, a majority of whom are not resident on the land. Instead, a range of mostly pastoralist groups including Tukana, Samburu, Maasai and Pokot occupied. According to the report, the ranches were bought by land holding companies in the 60s and 70s that subsequently divided and sold the plots in the 80s and 90s to small farmers from the central Kenya region, who are now the absentee landholders. Now three sets have competing claims to the land. The absentee owners with title deeds, the current occupants who, save from a few, have no legally established rights to the land, and the last of the Laikipiak Maasai that lay historical claim to the land from which they were evicted by a 1911 agreement with the British colonial authorities. There is also another large parcel of land which traverses all the way from Rumuruj town all the way up to Murwak. Thousands and thousands of acres of land. We are trying to appeal to the owners to, to come back so that at the end of the day they can occupy and take over their farms. But now at the moment what we have done, anybody who has settled illegally on another owner's farm, we are removing them and evicting them forcefully. Okay. What we require here, today I will take my officers to the ground, we remove them, what about the day after tomorrow and the years to come? So we, we, we also want to encourage them to, be, to, to ensure that they build permanent peace between them and their neighbors. But managing coexistence is much harder. There are certain, certain rangers who try to, to bring in other communities from very far to act as a buffer zone to protect them from some of these illegal aggressors. And this, uh, this kind of scenario, it also escalated the kind of conflict that we are experiencing in certain farms. Anytime they want to have local agreement uh, leases with some of these uh, pastoralists and others, they need to inform the local administration. Na mimi, kama kiongozi, siyamini ati kwamba polisi atakuja kusaidia. Ile solution ni dialogue, tuketi shini, tusungumuze na wenzetu, tuone namna ya kusaidiana. The government has also come under fire for sitting on its hands. Serikali awaingili kati. Hakuna aja kudanganyana. Serikali ndiyo wame lala. Serikali ni kuangoja zu mutu ya kikufa, wanaguja kusika. Sasa kasi ya serikali itakuwa ni hiyo. Unajua kama serikali inashindu na kazi yake, lazima wapia raia waji, wajilinde. Kwa sababu, katiba inasema wasi kwamba serikali inapaswa kulinda maisha ya binadamu, serikali inapaswa kulinda mali ya binadamu. Mimi sijui bunduki natoka wapi, ninajua ziko, na ni kwa sababu watu wameamua kujitetea. Ukianda hasa hizo kwa sehemu, atopatibu hata location ya chief. So hakuna hata eh, presentation ya government. Not in Kenya. In Kenya we are there, we are present everywhere in the ground. We have even had adequate administrative police officers and the police officers at the ground. Including the local administration, the chiefs and assistant chiefs. So why, why should somebody purport that there is no government? But he was here in my office the other day on, on Friday, was it? On, on that day he was here, trying to seek uh, services from the government. So I don't think, I think, I think that is far-fetched and th that is somebody who is, uh, I, I think is not normal. Now my friend, which shamba, kwa sababu ni shamba gani? Sasa tulikuwa tunangoja nani? Kama president alikuwa hapa na hii mambo inatendeka hivi, ni nani mwingine top of the president? These are uneasy times in the evidently ailing Laikipia. Its people can only hope whatever's blowing this way will bring about a wave of change and heal the ills of Laikipia. Sheila Sindeo, NTV. Who put you on the